Hi, welcome to Detention, where we pretend to know what we're talking about when it comes to D&D. I'm your host, Devil Driver Tristan. To my left, we have Hellish Rebuke Sam. And to my right, we have a little horny Brandon. <sighs> <laughs> so many are so good. So many are just... I hate them. As soon as the words enter, enter into the world itself, I hate them. There's always like an... You have to roll the percentile dice to find out. I had terrible luck, apparently. Speaking of hating them, we're going to continue our journey into the races of D&D and talk about tieflings. So near and dear to my heart. And we'll get into why I say it as far as that. But yes, we are continuing our uh, our journey into the different races of D&D um, as we continue the ones that are in the player's handbook. Uh, as always, we're going to kind of delve a little bit into their, their background. We're not going to delve too deep into their, their history and stuff because most of them have a lot of history. The history of tieflings, though, is really fun. Yes. It's very fun. <laughs> but this is, again, always is a uh, much more of an introduction to a uh, race to help you decide if you'd like to choose one for when making a character or even an NPC. So, again, we're going to start with tieflings today, the, uh, the wonderful little... Little demon people. The demon people. And I just want to read um, a quote mm. from the player's handbook about like their appearance and how they... It's just from the right at the start of the Tieflings. It says, Their appearance and their nature are not their fault, but the result of an ancient sin. And if that doesn't just encapsulate the entirety of a Tiefling, <laughs> they are stuck with their parents' problems. Right. <laughs> And this is where it comes into their infernal bloodline. Uh, so tieflings are technically from human bloodlines, but there's a number of reasons that cause them to... Uh, Somewhere in that bloodline. Yes, their infernal heritage kind of creates a uh, appearance that's oddly specific. Someone thought that a demon looked very righteous, and then they were like, you down? The demon was like... Oh. I am the god of lust, so, so yes. yes. And then boom, <laughs> tiefling. Right, so tieflings have large horns that can take a variety of shapes, some curling, curled, like a ram, some, some of them are straight, some of them are slightly yeah. curled, straight out. I mean, any kind of horn that you see on any kind of animal, or even ones that you can imagine, they got horns. They got them. Yeah. They can um, be huge, they can be small. They can even have, like, uh, like antelopes, or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if they would, but could you imagine, like, a tiefling with almost, like, deer? They can, yeah. yeah. They can I definitely mean, have those. It, they're, they're horns. They're not really antlers. They'd be larger horns with smaller horn protrusions. Yeah. But I you mean, can, you could technically have a tiefling that's got like the Darth Maul thing going on. You know? mm, like, that's a good point. Horn. You can. It, That'd be interesting. The horns are there. That is a characteristic that you cannot get rid of when you make a tiefling. They're there. You right. can have your character technically shave them down. That'd be very painful. Like, a, but like a Hellboy. Yeah, Hellboy. they could yeah. definitely shave them down. Mm -hmm. But they're going. That's part of their appearance, as right. well as another notable feature if you want to actually let's have the um, resident tiefling describe how she looks and we can pick apart what's the what you have to have okay so cal my play my uh, tiefling has horns mm -hmm. uh definitely um she also has a tail um the tails are typically between four to five feet long uh cal's tail is somewhat uh like more spiny along the base until it gets down to the end where it goes into more of a point mm -hmm. um Cal also has um, very sharp canine fangs, um, solid eyes. So t tieflings don't have pupils. No. Um, which I think is like the creepiest looking thing about them. But can be they so have, beautiful. <laughs> they have solid eyes. So they're typically either black, red, white, silver, or gold. But I mean, this is D&D, &D, so yeah. whatever. If your, D &D al if your DM allows it, you can make it. Cal's are solid silver um, as well. You know, So she also has like sort of a reddish brown skin tone. Um Definitely more on the red side. Um, but you can be a variety of different colors for tieflings, too. Um, I mean, you can be, like, as normal as, like, a regular, like, human skin tone, sort of like a tan or a brown or a black, or you can be something, like, really vast and wild, like Jester from Critical Role. You know, she's blue, a blue, blue. tiefling. Um, or a white tiefling. Or you can be my favorite tiefling of all time. Oh, well, my character favorite tiefling of all time, Fox, who is a stark white in almost every single way mm -hmm. tiefling. Um, same with your hair color. I mean, your hair color can be any variety of color. Cal's hair is black. Mm -hmm. So, so just as a quick rundown for the uh, as because uh, mixed in with Cal's, so, tieflings tend to have horns of varying size, shapes, colors, and styles. They have pointed canines. Yep. They have tails, and they have. Uh, 
Their eyes. Their eyes are solid with no pupils, yeah, and, and, and everything else can kind of... There are, color. however, a couple other characteristics, especially if you talk with your DM about it, that a tiefling can have. Mm-hmm. Um, some tieflings have hooves mm. instead of feet, for example. Um, Click back. Yeah. So it's, you know, different things. They can have, like, slightly sharper nails, nails. or, it's like... It's mostly yeah. based on their heritage. Yeah. Right. I if mean, you could argue where, how much, how close they are to their ancestral uh, inferno. Like, if they're close, they might resemble it more, yeah. or if they're a if far it's, yeah, descent. If it's trickled down the line and you just happen to be the person who's like, oh, yeah, your great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother, you know, had a child with a demon, but that child looked human, and now you're the... You're the... You're right. The like, you have, like, horns that hide under your there's hair. There's also something to be said about the history of tieflings, because... It, depending on how your DM wants to run it, you know, you can have it so that it wasn't so much that your that a member of your family like was intimate with a tiefling. It could also be they had a pact mm-hmm. with like a with like a Asmodeus or Mephistopheles or Azazel if you want to go super in <laughs> I said Azazel because Cal's got a warlock pact with Azazel, but twice the chance if Cal ever have kids, <laughs> that's gonna come out of tiefling. <laughs> right. This is where yeah, it definitely comes down to if there is a demon or some kind of force that has a hand in it in more than one way. Yeah. Um, hey. So you know, obviously, in that case, maybe maybe you don't have such a strong look. Whereas if you like your parent is like a te- like a demon, then you know. If your like father demon. is one, like if your father was a demon, then you know, like Cal's father, mm-hmm. and your mother um, was a human, then yeah. Or you are essentially the exact pick of I don't know the queen of all demons, and like boom. Now you really look like a demon. <laughs> yeah, things like that can happen. It's yes. all based on the story. It's all based on whatever the DM and the player want. Right. Now, as a DM note, don't force... If your player wants to be a, D, a tiefling but not, like, super into the family lineage, don't force that on the player because some people aren't no. comfortable with being like that. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't want to be shoehorned into, like, well, you're literally the spawn of Satan himself. Some people don't like that. Mm. Yeah. Talk to your player. <laughs> now, mean, as a DM, though, it can make for some really fun NPCs. I have an NPC you guys have not met yet, but he looks exactly like his daddy. Oh boy! Yeah, That's I mean this is this is definitely where uh, there with the amount of demons and demon lords and the hi- the, the hierarchy, the lords of hell and everything. Yeah, no. that you can range from even like being the you know the descendant of a lesser demon. Although like, well, I'm just a demon, and it's like, and well, that's totally a thing. And yeah. so and it's definitely a thing. So uh, we're gonna start kind of going a little bit more into like uh, so tieflings tend to be kind of like self reliant, suspicious. I mean, rightfully so. Everyone looks at them and goes, Ugh. "Yeah, this is where we talk about where most tieflings are not liked in most societies because they are descendants of demons." I mean, think about it; they look evil. They right. look like a demon. Yes. Imagine that. Most people are like, "Oh, demons! I don't like them." <laughs> right. Well, and it doesn't help that because of this fact, most of them grow up to be not good. It's like, well, if I'm hated, they I'm kind gonna... of take it one of two ways. Either way, they're either they're gonna like fight the stigma and be like, I'm gonna be the best person in the world to prove to you that I am not evil, or they're gonna be like, well, you say I'm a bad guy, I'm gonna be a bad guy. I'm the bad guy. Duh. I mean, and with tieflings, we're talking about a race of people that don't really have a place to call home. They have no homeland. There's no place that tieflings were born in. <laughs> yeah. Right. They just kind of just boop. You're a tiefling. Boop over there. Boop. So it's not like they have like some kind of like. Um, they don't have, like, a, a city or a continent that they're from. Generally, in larger cities, tieflings will congregate together mm-hmm. because safety numbers. Yes. <laughs> so if you want, you can make a city where, like, oh, over there on the east side are where all the tieflings live. Yeah. And so, or you can make it so all the tieflings have banded together and done what you said and just stuck it to the man. Like, mm-hmm. the tieflings live on the west side and they give out this, 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 and, like, so you can do it either way, or you can just have them be regular citizens, if, right. depending on how it works. Yeah. But this is where definitely, if you find uh, tieflings are so hated universally most of the time, they tend to, if you get the trust or become a friend of one, even if you're a tiefling or not, that tends to stick for life. Because there's, again, it's one of those things It's hard to get their trust because they're like, I ain't trust nobody, nobody trusts me. They're like, well, I trust you now. I will defend you for the rest of my life. I, 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 oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So... That's how you, that's like the background and like how tieflings act. And now we get into an interesting part of tiefling like name lore. Yeah. Which I find to be incredibly fun, but you find it even more fun. I was going to say, yeah, I know, Sam, you really like naming them tieflings. Yeah, so when it comes to tieflings, um, a lot of their names are based off of, like, the infernal language, Mm -hmm. you know, the infernal heritage. So you do have a lot of tieflings whose names are very representative of certain demonic names. 
Um, but you also have this interesting concept of a virtue name. And a virtue name is basically like, um, you know, an adjective that they live up to. So, like, let's say that you have a tiefling whose name is like fear like they may want to inspire fear that is what they live up to is inspiring fear in others or you might have one that's named hope and you may want to inspire hope so i think that virtue names are really cool for that reason because that's that's something that they strive to be they so much that they that that's their name like because yeah, we did that with uh when we were talking about uh classes we had made a tiefling named hope didn't we yeah it was a harmony harmony i think you're right yeah because mm-hmm. because uh, that because they were a uh they, bard. they, were, they bard. were bard and they were yeah. they were they were good the bard they, harmony who was a good and she all she wanted to do was make everyone be best friends yes yeah. yeah uh so yeah so i mean so there's not a really bad direction to go you can either go with virtue names or you can go with an infernal legacy it doesn't matter if you're good or evil or whatever it is there's definitely a lot of ways to do it um, that you can, it's just choosing the right one that you like to go mm-hmm. with. Uh, virtue names are really nice, uh, if you're trying to just give it a direction and to remind yourself of Definitely, yeah, it definitely gives you an idea of how you want to play your character. Or if they're trying to avoid, let's say that you're playing a good tiefling and you're trying to avoid your demon ancestry, you're not going to want a name that matches, like, oh, right. my Pest- name. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like if you're a, a descendant of Maman, you don't want to be called Amon. <laughs> and you're like, no, nah, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be friend i just want to be a friend <laughs> uh, my name is going to be um what's well, not like nowhere because he doesn't believe he belongs anywhere yeah. nowhere there you go yeah that is a really good rogue yeah there we where go. is he yeah. nowhere nowhere <laughs> <laughs> no, where, where's nowhere what, who are you talking about nowhere <laughs> who's on <up> first <laughs> <laughs> i am who so now that we've talked about uh the names of tieflings why don't we start talking into some of their traits? Uh, Sam, again, as the residential tiefling expert, why don't you tell us, uh, start us off there. So as a tiefling, your intelligence score increases by one. Yeah, and boom. even though you're kind of like hated in the world, your charisma score increases by two, which is all in thanks to your infernal heritage because a lot of demons are very deceptive, persuasive, intimidating. like Horrifying. So, horrifying. Right, and also as, as well in history, this is where you'll see a lot of demons are also, as much as they're grotesque and hideous, there's a lot of them that are very Beautiful. pretty, yeah. and uh, they're persuasive. That's the whole point of a demon. Some of them are very hideous and grotesque and monstrous, and other ones are like, hmm, hello. Hi, hello, I have a deal for you. I have a deal. I am I am so beautiful. I am the, the demon of lust. She's like, oh, Ooh. hello. So there's not too bad things to start out with. Right, so this is where you can definitely... Uh, Make a character however you want with those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, as far as age go, tieflings tend to mature the same rate as humans, but live a few years longer. So, we're looking at what? Like 150. 150 at yeah. max 150. Yeah. So, I mean, this is where magic would definitely come into play as well if they wanted to live any longer. Yep. Um, now, this is where we're going to... Uh, alignment is that tricky thing, because tieflings might not be inherently evil, uh, but many are just... That's- Sammy pointed out they had a tendency to go evil because people are like, you're smelly and gross and I hate you. And they go, right. well, all right then. <laughs> it's like, well, that's how I'm perceived. I might as well act that way. And lean into it. And a lot of them tend to lean towards chaotic alignments. Right. They tend to do whatever the heck they want. Because since they're so hated, they're just like, well, if I'm going to be good, I'm going to be good no matter what. So they can be like chaotic good. Or they're like, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want. They're going to be chaotic neutral. Or they're like, I'm going to hate everyone equally and be chaotic evil. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's- as far as size goes, they're roughly the same size and build as Standard. humans. Um, medium sizing. So, so height and yeah. weight. Walking and speed of 30 feet, as usual. But the cool thing they get... Is dark vision. Yay, dark vision. You Those special pupils give you something. Yep. <laughs> There's no pupils. There's no exactly. pupils. Exactly. <laughs> the special, <laughs> special pupils. The special non-existent But pupils. that's just one of the things you get from your uh, infernal heritage. You also get a resistance to fire damage, which is pretty cool. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as a little bit of uh, spells. Right. Because of your Infernal Legacy, you get to learn uh, Thaumaturgy as a cantrip. Uh, when you reach third level, you can cast Hellish Rebuke. Which is so useful. Right, because this is that spell yeah. that if you get hit as a reaction, you can go, Blah! You hit me, I hit you back. <laughs> yes, with Hellish Fire. I'm just, yep. blah. And then at fifth level, you can cast Darkness. Oof. And all of these spells use Charisma as your ability. Which should so. be pretty high because you get a plus two. <laughs> yes. Um, in languages, you can uh, read, write, common, and infernal. Well, imagine that. You just born with the tendency to understand when a, when a demon's talking to you. Yeah. Now, so, there are different types of tieflings. Oof. 
Now, there's a lot of them, and I don't think we're going to delve too yeah. deep into this. Is tend to be like as far as the descendants of a tiefling, like, like your lineage, Balzabub, Despater, um, Farina, Glazia, Levisus, Maman, Uh There is a standard variant, which is nice if none of those fit your fit your fit your goal. And there's Ariel. Yeah. But those are the ones that are made in the book. If you want, you can easily um, find a different demon in demon lore and uh, make your player a descendant of them. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's perfectly fine. And each one of these variants give them a different spell, different spells they learn. And I think they all... Slight different ability scores. Right, some well. of them have Most things. Most of them intelligence have charisma, but and... there's intelligence, strength. So if you're looking for Pond. a more specific yeah. type, you can definitely look into them. I mean, because, again, some of them have different spells, like Soul City Repeats, like Thaumaturgy, but, like, Disguise Self or uh, Suggestion, Minor Illusion. Flame uh, Blade. Yeah. So you'll find a bunch of different ones. So if you're looking into being more specific with a Tiefling, like, if, let's say that you're the basic Tiefling, you're just like, I like that, but I want a little bit more out of it. You can definitely look into them, including things like the variants and stuff like that. And they all give you a slight difference in your physical appearance because you're more closely related to the uh, rulers of hell. Mm -hmm. So that's exact. So that's a give and take. Yes. You look closer to a demon that people fear and want dead off, like want gone off of you know multiverse, Mm -hmm. but you also get some different cool stuff. Right. I mean, and this is where, like, for example, uh, with our campaign we do with uh, someone like Gangu, who is the uh, the king of gnolls, you might be a tiefling who might have more of a gnollish features in some regards. Which that would be horrifying. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just something as simple as a uh, skin discoloration that resembles kind of like a hyena spots oh. or uh, a hairstyle that naturally grows more like a, like the, the... The mohawk thing? Yeah, the mohawk thing. Or your horns might be a little bit smaller to match, or but your bigger teeth might be bigger. Yeah, horrifying. Yeah, cool. But, horrifying. But uh, and of course, this is with stuff like with my interest in uh, demonology and my background and that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, because we have countless things. I know in our house, uh, books and like the Encyclopedia of Demons, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's gr- if you're looking to do a tiefling and you want to delve more into it, and make it. Because, again, this is where you'll see, like, colors that are associated with different demons. Seals and yeah. sigils. There are all kinds of stuff out there to make your tiefling much more directed towards what you want. And if you wanted to, this is just a, I came on the top of my head. If you wanted to be a part, let's say your tiefling was a part of a cult where they made tieflings for a specific demon or devil, mm-hmm. and you want to break out. Mm-hmm. Well, you look like that demon. Everyone's going to know, so you're going to be more recognizable being part of this cult. And, but you're also going to know more about them. So if your party is going to take them on, you know the most about it. So it'll make a, a cool intrigue of like, I don't want to be seen because people will know me when I, when we get closer to it. Mm-hmm. But I also can get us in. Right. Now this might be one of those times where if you know that's the background you want to do, you might want to take the one with uh, the the tiefling variant where you can do disguise self as a spell. Yeah, as a cantrip. Right. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, it might be helpful. So there might be some planning ahead. But this is definitely where... With you making a tiefling, definitely this is where you get the chance to delve into it. But if you just want a basic straight out one, you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. Um, I know you're clearly a big fan of tieflings, yeah. and I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure we all are. Um, it's just I know Sam, you're the big tiefling. If, honestly, if I didn't, if I didn't want to give myself a bit more variety of things, I could probably play a tiefling in, like in every campaign for the rest of my <laughs> life. Like I just, I really love them. So speaking of playing tieflings in campaigns, uh, as with every race, I like to go and, and uh, talk to us, each one of us, about our favorite tiefling we've played or an NPC that we've uh, had, um, and it can be either one of your own or someone else's. So uh, let's start with Sam. Uh, I mean, we know Cal, right? But uh, do you have another tiefling that you like? And you can also choose something from another campaign, whether it's. A uh, character one of us has created, or an NPC, or that the you NPC read. that you know ran bullied. <laughs> so there's there's a couple NPC tieflings that I've made that I really like. Um, one that you guys did meet was Void. However, mm-hmm. it was kind of a different version of, of him because it was a one shot. I sort of made some the multiverse. For his. Yeah. Um, there is another NPC that you guys are going to meet in my campaign that I won't go into much about, um, but I really like him. And then obviously there's Fox, Fox. Um, who Cal hates, but I love. Oh, he is. Uh, before you even ask me, I love him. He's my favorite. Yes. He is so. He is so fa- multifaceted. You guys don't even know. <laughs> and when we get there, you guys are all gonna be like, "You've had that the entire time." And I go, "Yes." 
and it's been really hard not to tell you all. <laughs> okay, well, how about outside of Fox? One of your own or someone else's? Cal. Okay, Cal. Everybody loves Cal. <laughs> There's Cal. two tieflings. That's all it is. There's all, I've played other tieflings, and I've had people who have been tieflings, but Cal is my favorite because of... I mean, you may not want to admit it, but Cal's grown. Mm-hmm. This one was level one, and she's now... She's not drinking so much. She's not drinking as much. Mm-hmm. She's not as foolhardy. She's a little more trepidatious and a little more protective of friends. Originally, you were like, whatever we well, want to do. she's also not being haunted so much. And so things have changed, and yeah. Cal has grown into someone who's like, i got to keep these guys alive. They're the only people well, that tolerate me. Well, it's like me. we said with that tiefling loyalty. You know, once you establish yourself as somebody that this person can trust, mm-hmm. they tend to be a bit more loyal and, you know, right. exchange. And there has been that. growth in you as a player and Cal as a result no and growth. vice versa. And I love it because that's what D&D's all about. I guess Cal's right. just going to have to start drinking more. Al Cosman banned. <laughs> no! no! As for me, I Game have... one madness point instantly. <laughs> I have two, one of which I have played, one of which I haven't gotten a chance to. The one uh, I have uh, Krampix, which is a descendant of Krampus for... Uh, uh, it's not on stream, but we've done a one-shot that dealt with... Uh, it was the crappy Christmas caper. I love that. If you guys want, we'll, we'll do uh, an Easter one. We should do a part two for Christmas this year. We sh- well, because... I mean, I guess we could do it for Christmas, but... The Christmasing. The Christmasing. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a descendant of, uh, of uh, Krampus... Uh, so he's a tiefling with, uh, like, hooves, and he's dark. Uh, he's, like, the more dark end of a tiefling. Yeah. Yes. So, but, but he's just fun to play because he doesn't care about anything else. Because his mission was to kill Santa because, you know... Spoiler alert. Santa put them on the night. Spoiler alert. Santa's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's one of those things where... Now Krampus, uh, Krampix runs the North Pole, which is hilarious to me. But he's like a lawful evil character. Because yeah. despite the fact that he, he owns the North Pole, he's just like, all right, everything back to normal, guys. If they're bad, I'm kidnapping the kids and smacking them with reeds because that's what Krampus would And him with chains and rattle them. <laughs> yeah. Give you a rattle, rattle. <laughs> and and uh, so Krampix alone is just one of those funny characters to me. Um... But the other one is the one uh, my paladin that I haven't gotten to ch- play, and I know you love the idea of this. Um, I had I had come up with an idea of having a tiefling paladin because in my head it sounded so bizarre. It's like how do you make like a holy tiefling? So he's like the he's like the dis- he's the son of a like a holy man and a tiefling woman who's uh, they're both religious good people. One just happens to be a tiefling, but the church doesn't approve of them. They have a tiefling kid who looks just like a stereotypical devil, like red skin, little devil horns. Like, he looks like, yep, that's the child of the devil right there. But uh, he is religious himself because he's raised by religious parents. So the church is like, all right, if you want to be part of the church, you've got to be a paladin and go out there with the oath of redemption. And he's fighting for everything, like devotion of... I'm fighting for my friends and for my right to exist. <laughs> yes. Yay! <laughs> it's like, the sad truth of a tiefling, though. You, like you're going to gonna fight for your right to exist. Right, and I made it to a point that it was such a stereotype that he's running around with a uh, trident to mimic the pitchfork of, like, the devils. So he's Hilarious. fighting evil cool. with the weapon of evil. Yeah. And to him, and to me, it was such a, uh, you know, the backwards character, like, well, that shouldn't make any sense. It's like, I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Those are our top tieflings and how you can make a tiefling. Most people, when they make tieflings, they do like a rogue, mm-hmm. or you could do a warlock because that's easy. Um, uh, a bard, bards, sorcerers, because mm. so that makes sense as well. A lot of people, when they make tieflings, they lean into the charisma classes. Yes, yeah. because by Jove, you get a plus two <laughs> to charisma. Two well charisma. Use it. Might as well use it, yeah. So, but also the plus one to intelligence, you mm. could do um, upcoming soon the artificer. Yeah. Mm. When that's uh, officially released, as well as wizard. Yeah. I mean, also with the variants of the tieflings, you, you can could... do different variations where charisma is still going to be high. But... Right, but I mean, like with some of them, if you get bonus to wisdoms. Uh, Putting in the right stats in the right place is something like monk would work out. Monk really would well. work, druid would work. So you can you can make a tiefling work. So most people statistically go with charisma based classes for so like, obvious reasons. Like, right, the bard or the the rogue are probably the most too common. I would probably. imagine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so tieflings um, inherently perceived as evil, but they are very interesting characters. If you're looking for like a, a moody rogue. Definitely a good place to start yeah, seeing how they're definitely. already going to be grumpy definitely, about this existing. Uh, the mood. Big yeah. mood. 
Yeah. Yeah, or I mean, this is where it's a great opportunity to go on the opposite side, do something like a bard, and just be like, "Hi, I'm a bard teeth like," and they're just like, "We hate you." Like, well, that's not a nice thing to say, but look at my music. Oh wow, you're not that bad. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, here's some gold. Yay! I mean, like I said, tieflings will always have like a super special place in, in my the heart. dark pit um, of your heart. If you have any questions about tieflings. DM, this DM uh, can totally help you. I'll, I'll just put transfer, I'll just sending stone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, definitely, if you're thinking about doing healing and you're worried about the dynamic, feel free to talk to your DM about yeah. that. If you're like, hey, how many tieflings are in this world? How are they treated? And as a DM, you, you can either make the choice of being like, oh, I'm not telling you. Or they're going to be like, well, tieflings are pretty hated in this world. You might be Good like, luck, friend. You can either choose the challenge or you can be like, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> But again, this is all to help you really kind of decide, uh, or help you decide when you're picking a race to go with the uh, class, or uh, just kind of get you going. Again, tieflings are a very interesting race. They're definitely the, a little bit more on the uh, the edgy side. You are demon children technically, but they have a lot of uh, variety and opportunity to do. A lot of, uh, opportunity. A lot of uh, plot devices. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, because how can you not like push like, oh, your grandpappy is a definitely a big old demon who hates the world. He's got a connection with you. Guess who's stuck being a part of the story now? Oh no. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, tieflings, uh, definitely a good choice if you're looking into doing things. And uh, until we see you guys next time, detention dismissed.